Hey everybody, it's me, Evan Gatcher. Um, today, uh, even though I know I haven't like posted a video for a month, um, I just want to do a little product review today, something a little fun, uh, for people that might. What's it doing? It, it, it's my camera's being boo boo, but um. The thing is, I just want to do a cute, quick little fun video for people that might want to know what art supplies they should buy. I'm just going over the different kinds of markers and pencils and uh, pens like Prismacolor and Copic and stuff. Um, these are Copics. This is a Prismacolor. This is like a pen that I use and this is a Prismacolor. I'll also ta talk about the new kinds of pencils that I use and, you know, that kind of thing. So, I'll start off with uh, the pen. Let me kind of zoom in here. Let's see if this is big enough. Oh, where's my pen? Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm just... Like, with lines, you can kind of draw them any way. You can draw them like this. You can do them really lightly. You can go really dark. Um, the way that I like to do it, it usually works better with a really thin pen. But kind of... Um, but kind of going over it back and forth like this. You can actually get some really cool um, effects from that. Like these two pictures I've drawn. I did the entire thing with kind of using that back and forth look. Um, I've just been playing around with bugs lately. But uh, here's one of them. And here's the other. Okay, now let's get back. Um, and I think that they're really good pens. They work over all other medias, but I'll go over that later. Um, another thing is you can get different kinds of them. Like this is, um, a brush marker, a medium brush, a BM. <laughs> I know, it sounds funny. But, um, and with these, they can be thick, they can be really thin. Uh, there's all different kinds of types of them. Like, there's other brands that I like to use. They're all kind of the same. But they, some of them give, like, kind of different effects. Some of them don't. Here is a uh, thinner brush marker. Um, now I'll go on to uh, my Copic and Prismacolor markers. So, uh, this is the Copic. You can get a lot of, uh, nice colors from it. Here's one of them. Um, and here's it next to a, uh, different one. This is the closest. I know it's kind of, uh, running out of ink. But it's the closest color I have to this one. A little darker. I found that Copics are more, um, earthy looking. Like, here is a, uh, Prismacolor, and here is kind of like its Copic equivalent. See, I would find these colors kind of more earthy, and those are the Copics. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Prismacolor, I find is very good for, um, drawing, like, at school or for a job, where Copics would be better for just using them at home and having fun and testing out because there's many ways to use them. Um, a lot of you might be thinking, oh, what about uh, Micron? I really don't use Micron. I feel that it is um, a little almost oversaturated. I really don't find it the best kind of pen. Um, this is one of the pens. Uh, it's made by the same company, Sakura. It's like this really thick pen. It's, I'm guessing, used for, like, cartoon drawings and stuff. Um, it actually lasted pretty well, and I'm proud that it uses well. Um, back to these colors. They work well, like, with other types. Like, this is a Prismacolor pencil here. And I'm just going to shade it a little. 
and they work beautifully over each other. And let me just shade this. See, they look. It looks really nice. And then you can, of course, go over it and give it an even better looking hue. Um, I also own this thing called a jelly roller. It's kind of like a um, white pen. Uh, this one is, uh, it's a ballpoint pen. That's why I don't use it a whole lot. But you can do cool things with it. You can smudge it and smear it. And you can get cool highlighted effects. Um, here's another... Wait, where is it? <laughs> Here is another, like, related to each other kind of dealy. There. So, we have this color right here. And then it can be related. Where'd it go? One sec. Uh, here. Oh, oh. Oh, here we go. That, that was kind of boo-boo. Um, and here's it related to a little darker form, but they could be used together in shading areas. Here's another brand that I use, kind of. It's called uh, Windsor & Newton. And then, of course, you can take your pencil and you can shade them. Now, I'm not going to be doing a shading right now, but that's what you can do. Um, okay, so another thing is... These are all the markers, not the pencils, but the markers, they're all alcohol-based. Oh, don't let that create. They're all alcohol-based. So that means that, um, like, the, instead of having a water base, they are made of alcohol. And when you put it down, like when you're drawing with it, See, it's not water that has the ink in it. Like, it's not like when... Maybe if you don't know about colors, the way it works is if I had, like, a Crayola or something. The thing is, when you're putting it down, you're just putting colored water onto the paper. And that's how it works. Now, with these, imagine if you're putting colored wine onto the paper or alcohol. That's why an alcohol base is so good, because it's like colored alcohol. Now, it does mean they're flammable, but, I mean, uh, and it, it looks better, and as you can see, it has much less smear. So if you were, like, thinking of buying a brand that says, we're water-based, but we're erasable if you buy our special eraser, it, it doesn't work. Because it becomes really streaky, and then erasing it doesn't work. If you try to buy those, they're also really expensive because the eraser is, like, specially made out of cheese from rare moths or something. I don't know. But it's expensive, and even though these can't erase, they're still really good. Um... Let me show you with, like, a drawing. Wait, this is upside down for you guys. Sorry. Okay, this is Sam. I don't know, Sam. And, um, so the cool thing you can do with these... Okay, I'm going to color them in is you can put them on top of each other with other materials. Um, I mean, they work with almost every single other artistic material that you can think of. Um, they don't work with, uh, they don't work with acrylic or oil, um, paint, but they work amazing with watercolor. And, um, they don't work well with anything that'll kind of block it out. Or is three-dimensional, like clay or something. I don't imagine you putting clay onto an artwork. But, I mean, it won't blend together. Um, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with these. 
I'm just jelly rolling it. Kind of smudging it. And see, it looks really good. And then you can even use, like, a colored pen. You can even use a colored pencil and uh, shade it in. And make it look like it's for real. I mean, I didn't do a good job, but I was just quick with it. Now, these are the pencils that I use. Um, I don't use pencils a whole lot of time, but I do use them. And the cool thing about these is they're not like Crayola pencils. I'm just using Crayola. Because they're made out of different materials. That's why artistic things are more expensive. Because they're made out of more material, uh, they're made out of more expensive materials, so they gotta charge you more. And so they're made out of a nicer material that goes onto the paper better. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, what do you think is better, Copics or Prismacolors? And I would say I like them both the same, really. But Wait, I'm sorry, I gotta pause. I'm really sorry. Sorry about that. My sister was asking some question about something. Um, but yeah, so that's the thing. Um, I've I know I've shown you the pencil that I've used before, but I've actually found a new pencil type that I like better. They are um I mean it doesn't matter what brand you get. But they're graphite pencils, 100% graphite. And so you, you can smear them easier. You can do so much more with them. And they work as a really, really good pencil. So um, I know I don't have much more to go over. So thanks for 30 subs. Be sure to like and subscribe. And pe pe peace out.